Why didn't the package mention in any way, shape or form the words agriculture or primary industry, which earn 65 per cent of our overseas exchange earnings? And why didn't the word exports come into that package or any statement the government's made since it was elected? The Honourable Prime Minister, and again may answer one of those questions. Mr Speaker, I can confirm that uh, the National Party was not in government in the 2007-2008 period, except at the end of 2008. But I am surprised that the member who used to be the Minister of Agriculture doesn't realise that so many farms up and down the country are small to medium enterprises, as are exporters. No wonder the agricultural sector was so pleased to see the back of them. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the, Prime Minister, has the Prime Minister seen the proposal from United Nations Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon for a Green New Deal, uh, which would address both the global economic crisis and the global climate crisis at the same time, and which elements of the Green New Deal will be incorporated in his economic package when it's released? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I have, and the member will be pleased to see uh, when we announce some of the projects that they will be addressing issues not only of energy efficiency uh, but of insulation and of climate change. And I think he'll be pleased when he sees the final package. Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, has the, will his government be following in the steps of US President Barack Obama? Um, who's not only addressing kind of elements of a Green New Deal, but is also talking about creating, creating five million green collar jobs, so innovative jobs in green collar industries. These are new jobs and innovative jobs that will actually save the climate and produce good economic results. Has he been follow will he be following in the steps of Barack Obama, and what elements of his economic package will be along the lines of creating green collar jobs? The Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I've learnt, long since learnt it's dangerous territory to start likening oneself to Barack Obama. Uh, <coughs> but uh, I can assure the member that we will be creating jobs in our economy and they will be jobs that uh, not only have a consideration for economic growth and providing good wages for those who are in them, but there will also be jobs that have an eye to ensuring that environmental responsibility is taken seriously by our government. Mr. Speaker, Nathan Guy. Is the Prime Minister concerned about building up excessive levels of government debt? Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes, I am very concerned about New Zealand's future debt levels. In the short term, the prospect of excessive levels of government debt could well bring about a downgrade from credit agencies. Members will be aware that the Standard & Poor's recently gave New Zealand a negative outlook. A downgrade would lead to New Zealanders paying higher interest rates and risks lower growth rates into the future. And I would remind the Leader of the Opposition that if he wants to make promises about doing more and spending more, that can only come from debt, given our current cash deficit, and maybe he should show some restraint. Question. No. Point of order, the Honourable Jim Anderson. I seek leave to table the award given to me by the Federated Farmers. <laughs> for being the only leader in the last election to emphasise the importance Order, of the role of agriculture. Leave has been sought. Order. Leave has been sought to table an award. I remind the honourable member it must be tabled before the end of the day. Is there any objection to that course of action? There is no objection. We come now. We come now to question two in the name of the honourable leader of the opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he have confidence in all of his ministers? Uh, the Honourable Prime Minister. Yes, because they are talented people who are working hard for New Zealand. Uh, supplementary question, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, can he or the country have any confidence in the transparency and the honesty of the Minister of Finance who, while ramming legislation through before Christmas without subjecting it to scrutiny of a select committee, deliberately suppressed and withheld from the public and from parliamentarians the advice that he received from his own ministry 
that the fundamental parts of that legislation were deeply flawed. The Honourable, Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes, I have complete confidence in the Minister of Finance. Uh, and if we want to have concerns about ministers of finance, maybe, maybe we could have concern for a minister of finance that may well find himself in breach of the Public Finance Act. A uh, supplementary question, Mr the Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Why was the National Party so frightened to release the briefing to Bill English at the same time as it released other briefings, and now that it has been found to reveal that what the National Party pushed through was fundamentally flawed, will he admit that he was wrong and change that legislation? Yep. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, well, we're far from frightened. I might uh, remind the uh, member uh, that when he was last in government, his Minister of Finance described briefings from the Treasury as ideological burp. But let's put that all to one side. So we'll put that to one side, Mr Speaker. Can I, can I, can I refer... Order. Can I refer the member to the Wall Street Journal uh, of Asia that wrote a very interesting editorial just last week commending New Zealand for its economic packages in contrast with many uh, countries around Asia? Question, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, was the Prime Minister or his office directly or indirectly involved in the decision not to make the Treasury briefings available when they were relevant to the debate before the House. And how does that, if so, how does that reflect on the Prime Minister's supposed commitment to openness and transparency? The Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. The Speaker, no, I wasn't personally involved. It may come as a shock to that member, but I have such confidence. Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Or his office was involved. All right. Speaker, uh, no. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, no, I was not involved, and to the best of my knowledge, my office was not involved. And it may come as a great surprise to the member, but I have such confidence in my Minister of Finance that he can choose to release his briefing from the Treasury whenever he likes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Leader question. of the Opposition, uh, can the Prime Minister categorically assure the House? that National is not concealing Treasury or other departmental advice against any of the legislation now being introduced today before this House under urgency. Yeah. 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 Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, I, I can confirm uh, what, that the, the Government is not concealing uh, any briefings uh, and hiding anything from the House. And maybe, maybe if... Uh, the member wants to talk about concealing things, maybe the member should go and ask his own research unit, who last time I saw them, they were concealing the booze from the parliamentary Christmas party. Order. Order. Point of order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. You go. Help. Order. 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 The member is taking a point of order, and the ministerial benches know that points of order are heard in silence. Thank you. The Mr. Honourable Honourable Leader Speaker, of the I point out to you that the Prime Minister is categorically assured that they're not withholding anything. In fact, they haven't even released anything. Order. How can he give the House that assurance? Order. The, right on, the Honourable Member may like to reflect on how that was a point of order. Mr. Speaker. Point of order, uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. There is, there is a, 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 a clause in 